Chapter 9. You can't fire me because I quit. The next morning I found myself lamenting and pacing in the hallway just outside of Bill's office. I must have rehearsed this speech a thousand times on my morning commute. This wasn't my car and this wasn't going to be an easy conversation. I had to do it. All the dread in the world would not dissuade me. Bill, I just wanted to thank you for hiring me. I mumbled while waving my hands around like a madman. No matter how many ways I went over this in my head, I knew there wasn't a great way to say it. I knew it was now or never. No matter how much I paced back and forth, no matter how clammy my hands became, and no matter how much sweat I wiped from my brow, like a band-aid, it was time to rip it off and get it over with. I sheepishly knocked on Bill's door and waited for a reply before entering. Knock, knock, knock. This wasn't the kind of knock that made a statement. Maybe I'd get lucky and miss him. Maybe... I mean, I could always just leave a note under the door and make a run for it. As it would turn out, I had no such luck. The door slowly opened and Bill invited me in. Mike, come on in! I entered his office and gravitated toward the nearest empty seat. Well, there is no turning back now. Grab a seat! He gestured over to the most comfortable chair in the office. Normally that spot would be solely reserved for Bill. I haven't seen you around the office very much lately, so tell me, Mike, what's going on? What is it that everyone else seems to know and that I don't? What eludes me? Was I that transparent? He already knew why I was here and why I was pacing outside his office for the last 25 minutes. I mean, I left tracks of footprints, like a snow angel except on commercial-grade carpet. In an attempt to conceal the sweat accumulating on my hands, I decided to clasp my hands and start rubbing them together. Bill looked at me and waited for me to say something. To think, it wasn't more than three years ago that I was sitting in this very office for my first interview. Bill, we need to talk. Isn't that what we're doing right now? What I mean is, I... Before I could finish my sentence, Bill jumped back into the conversation. Let me guess, you're striking out on your own and starting your own practice. Good for you. Bill looked at me smug and with very little amazement. It dawned on me that Bill must have had this conversation dozens, if not hundreds of times over the years. N not exactly. Not exactly? Tell me more. I was made an offer yesterday and thought I should tell you right away. An offer? From whom? Don't tell me one of those other schmucks down the road snatched you up. Flushy. I'm going to work for Flushy. What? Bill was struck with utter disbelief. Bill started stroking his beard with a confused gaze. It was really more an overwhelming sense of bewilderment. I didn't really know what else to say, so I waited for him to step back in. Bill's beard had a certain acquired fortitude, the kind that comes with a thick application of beard oil. It had this shiny veneer that caught my eye. Mike, you never struck me as the kind of guy that was always looking for the easy way out. To be honest, I thought you were a lifer. I thought I saw a lot of me in you. Was I that off base? Yeah, I probably deserved that. It was the easy way out. I started nodding my head in agreement. I felt somewhat obliged for the looming verbal beatdown that was coming my way. Bill had brought me into the industry, and now I'm about to join up with THE company dead set at destroying the old way of doing things. He stuck his hands out in front of him and put them about a foot apart from each other, kind of like he was holding an invisible beach ball. This, Mike, this is the entire insurance marketplace. It's all here, within the palm of my hands. All insurance companies, big or small, float between these invisible boundaries. Some are more expensive on the right side, and some are less expensive on the left side, and some are right in the middle. At some point in time, every company is the cheapest, but more times than not, most companies fall on the right side most of the time. Look, these cheap companies always come and go, but they don't stick it out for the long haul. 
Trust me, I've been doing this for over 30 years. You know why some companies are always the cheapest? All companies have the same claims costs. It's not like this company figured out how to insure people who don't die. Think about it. How is it possible? Look, Bill, if I can't beat them, I might as well join them. Mike, you've built a practice here. You've got a client list. You've got support. You deserve to stay here. This is and always will be a relationship business, and you've done great so far at cultivating relationships. It takes time to build, and you've already done it in a short period of time. What takes people 10 years, you've done in less than three. He compassionately enumerated my various accomplishments. With respect, Bill, Fleshy is the future, and I think the agent model has somewhat outlived its usefulness. Bill scoffed at my proclamation. He was well within his rights to do so. Here I was some kid, a relative novice by comparison, opining on about something I knew very little about. Mike, no one is going to pay you to solve a problem that doesn't exist over at some pie-in-the-sky insure tech. The agent model is still a viable option. Trust me, I've been doing this since before you were born. Bill's impassioned pursuit for the truth was relentless. Bill leaned forward in his chair and placed his elbows firmly on his desk. How can I possibly compete with a company like Fleshy? How can any agent expect to beat their prices? Bill shook his head in disbelief, like all of his training had gone in one ear and out the other. Part of me appreciated that, his candid nature. I mean, from time to time, Bill did proportion out more than his share of wisdom. Mike, price isn't everything. Bill, price isn't everything. It's the only thing. It's the only thing people care about these days. They don't care about having enough insurance. They don't care about having the right insurance. They don't care about understanding their insurance. They care about price. Mike, I'd be lying to you if I said price wasn't a factor. Bill shifted back and forth in his chair. He sat back a bit more. Clearly, my retorts were making him somewhat uncomfortable. I couldn't blame him. I mean, how could I? I was basically undermining his entire existence as an insurance agent. Mike, do you know when the first life insurance policy was issued? No, I was sick the day they taught history at insurance school. Why don't you enlighten me? Bill looked at me with an amused expression. At the very least, he appreciated my sarcastic sense of humor. Bill gave me three years of apprenticeship under his tutelage. I figured that lengthening the conversation was sort of my penance. The first life insurance policy was sold in the early 1700s. Huh. This industry is over 300 years old. And over that 300-year period, that storied history, insurance agents have been there every single step of the way, selling policies and serving clients. Mm-hmm. The thing is, Mike, the industry has changed over that time. People have changed. Technology has changed. But what has endured is the agent-client relationship. Insurance agents have been around for hundreds of years and will continue to be around for hundreds of years. I'm sure Fleshy has a lot of smart people working there. I'm sure Fleshy has a lot of smart technology that I cannot pronounce. I'm sure Fleshy has a lot of investors backing its success. What they don't have are the intangibles. I was beat, bamboozled, and befuddled. What could I say? Nothing. So I didn't. I sat there and took it like a man. Human existence, life itself, is rather ephemeral. There is a preciousness to it all, and to that end, that is why agents will always be around. People are fragile, life is fragile, and people need guidance from an agent, whether they know it or not. Bill's impassioned rhetoric wasn't making a dent. My mind was made up. If anything, he only solidified my position. As every minute of lecturing passed, I found my patience quickly fleeting. This was becoming a rather circular argument, and I sensed Bill had realized it as well. I get that, Bill. I really do. But fleshy is the future, and I don't want to miss out on being a part of that. Ah, another case of FOMO. 
FOMO? Fear of missing out. Ah, I imagine you'll need to up your three-letter acronym game working over at Flushy. Is there anything I can do to change your mind? No, but I appreciate you asking. Well, I didn't think so. You're a man on a mission, that is clear. Bill stood up from behind his desk and stuck out his hand. Mike, you've always got a place here, and you're welcome back at any time. I reached out and grabbed his hand. He latched on like vice grip and put his other hand over the top of mine as we shook. Bill, I really appreciate what you did for me, but I'd be a fool to pass up this opportunity. Bill and I cordially shook hands. It was one of those long, awkward handshakes. He looked me in the eyes and smiled. Now, before you go, there is just the matter of settling your accounts. What do you mean by settling my accounts? Your commission draw accounts. You do remember how a draw works, right? I was dumbstruck for a quick minute. How I let that one slip through the cracks, I will never know. Bill hoodwinked me. I guess in all fairness to Bill, it wasn't all that shocking. Mike, don't tell me you forgot about the draw. I'd completely forgotten about the draw. So naturally, I did the thing most defensive people do and ignorantly balked. Talk about being caught with your pants around your ankles. Don't tell me you forgot. Well, Bill, you're joking, right? I mean, after all the money I made you? That was the deal, kid. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate the money we made together. I mean, it can't be that much, right? How much are we talking about here? Actually, I have the exact figures right here. Bill handed me a sealed manila envelope. How in the heck did he have this prepared? As you can imagine, we stopped shaking hands. The tone of the conversation became slightly combative, but still friendly. I was starting to come off as that crazy uncle arguing politics over the Thanksgiving dinner table. What? You didn't think I knew you were looking around? Remember who owns these computers, kid? You started looking for jobs on company computers. Computers that I own. Talk about Bush League blunders. Yeah, I messed up. Bill knew he had me dead to rights. I slowly started opening the envelope and decided to stop abruptly. I shook my head and stuffed the envelope into my back pocket. So, in the end, it's all business to you. What about all those long hours I put in? All of the birthday parties I missed? All of the family gatherings I had to skip? I appreciate all of your effort, but that was the deal we both agreed to. That's how it is? If we don't honor our agreements, what separates us from the animals? It's not personal, it's just business. It is what it is. Fair enough, I replied back, defeated and submissive. I imagined our paths might cross again one day, hopefully in a good way. I pushed in my chair and headed for the nearest exit. For now, it was time to move on and start the next chapter in my career. What in the heck have I gotten myself into? I've got a big looming debt hanging over my head, and I'm about to step into a complete unknown with Flushy. All I could do is hope for my 